Good morning, guys, and welcome to the last presentation. So, unfortunately, I was not able to attend the Springs trip, so I don't have any photos or videos from that trip, but I do hope to make it up in photos and videos from the other two trips that we went on. So, first we're going to be looking at the Econ Lakachi River. Uh, this was our example of a black water river system. The first plant we're starting with is Eastern Poison Ivy, Toxic Codendron Radicans. Uh, you could tell this was Poison Ivy right away because of the three leaves. And this plant contains urushiol, that is what causes the inflammation and what usually turns out to be the severe contact dermatitis that causes irritation in people's skin when they come in contact with this. Next we have a Carolina willow tree, Salix Caroliniana. These are valued for the contributions in shade, erosion control, and timber that they make. Here we have an American Royal Fern, Osmonda spectabilis, and these are characterized by their spore producing structures. Here is Shade Mudflower, Micranthemum umbrosum. This is a super beautiful plant and it is popular for use in aquariums because it can grow entirely underwater given the right conditions. These are false buttonweeds, Spermacoque verticillate, and these serve as an important nectar source for uh, a very important biological control for the mole cricket. This is Walter's viburnum, viburnum obovatum, and these plants can reach up to 20 feet tall and they are native to the southeast U.S. This is an Asian clam, Corbicula fluminea, and these are extremely invasive. Uh, they are native to the fresh waters of Eastern and Southern Asia, and they were introduced here around 1930. This is a Southern Rainbow, Velosa vibex, and these can grow on average to be about four inches in length. This is the Northern Cardinal, Cardinalis cardinalis, this is the state bird for seven states in the United States, and they get their red plumage from the foods that they eat. This is a bank swallow, Riparia riparia. I could tell what it was because of its dark head and light body. Uh, and male bank swallows can differentiate between heavier and more receptive females in flight and actually chase them down to mate. This is a pileated woodpecker, Dryocopus pileatus. You can see its red coloring on the top of its head. And this is the largest living woodpecker in North America. These are some common raccoon tracks, Procyon lotor. Uh, the common raccoon can reach speeds of 15 miles per hour and withstand a 35-foot drop from a tree. Now moving on to the Canaveral National Seashore. This was our beach and dune habitat. Starting off with plants, this is the sea grape plant. Cocoloba uvifera. These are my favorite plants in the world. I don't know why for the longest time since I was young. I've just loved them. Um, the adult organisms are considered sessile, so once they choose their location, they're kind of stuck there. And these plants are also hermaphrodites. This is narrowleaf sargasso. Sargassum 
Natans. I didn't get a 100% credible source on this. Um, the most credible I got to was iNaturalist, but I narrowed it down to do two different species of sargassum, and this is the species. The narrow leaf is what my photos best looked like. Um, and the sargassum genus in general is a habitat and feeding ground for several different aquatic organisms. This is the beach bean or the seaside jack bean, Canav Canavalia rosea. These guys were everywhere and they were growing huge beans. Uh, these beans are edible while the seed pods are young, but they require a lot more processing to eat once they reach maturity. This is St. Augustine grass, Stenotaphrum secundatum. This grass has great tolerance overall in terms of wear and tear, shade, and drought. This is the East Coast Dune Sunflower, Helianthus debilis. This flower is a self-feeder a self -feeder, and it is particularly attractive to the three bees, bees, butterflies, and birds. This is Seacoast Marsh Elder, Iva imbricata. This plant uh, had like a succulent look and type of feel, and they're very useful for dune stabilization. This is the railroad vine, Epimoia pescaprae. A super beautiful plant and one of the best known examples of oceanic dispersal. This plant's seeds flow and are completely unaffected by salt water in terms of germination. This is the coastal ragweed, Ambrosia hispida. And many people are actually allergic to this plant's windborne pollen and it can really affect their allergies. This is the coastal sea rocket, Cacao lanceolata. This plant is actually edible. The leaves and stems can be in raw or cooked, and it's a mustardy flavor. This plant is called the firewheel, Gelardia pulchella. In the language of flowers, these symbolize bravery, and they have a lot of history uh, with the Indian culture. This is the snowberry or the milkberry, Chiococa alba. These, uh, this plant's roots have several uses in herbal medicine, including being used for laxative purposes, diuretics, and an antidiarrheals. This little guy is a ponderous arc shell, Noatia ponderosa, and something I found out that was interesting about these guys are that they feed through a little figure eight shaped opening in the mantle and they snack on plankton. This is a goose barnacle, Lepas and Serifa. Um, these are filter feeders and they're normally found anchored to floating objects, which is how we found them here. Uh, they are anchored to a floating plastic bottle that was washed up on the beach. This is the Portuguese man of war, Fasalia Fasalis. And something that I found interesting about this species is that they are not actually jellyfish. They are siphonophores, which uh, are colonial animals made up of individual specialized organisms that work together as a unit. So kind of a team effort in this one. These are photos of kind of dismembered parts of an Atlantic blue crab, 
Calinectus sapidus. Uh, you can see two different shells that I found, and then also a claw. The shell on the left has a barnacle on it, and also a pretty cool pattern. And, uh, Calinectus sapidus, the Latin name for this species, actually translates to the tasteful in Latin. This little guy is a brown anole. Anolis Sa Sagrae. Um, I'm sure we've seen him everywhere this semester, but I never got a chance to give him his time to shine in any of my presentations, so I figured I'd include him now. This is a mole crab, Amarita talpoida. These can reach up to one inch in length, so they can get huge. And uh, they are completely harmless as they can't bite, they can't pinch, and they can't sting you. These are some Florida pompano fish, Trachinotus carolinus. Uh, the one at the top is an adult and the one beneath it is a juvenile. These fish are toothless, and they can grow up to a length of 18 inches. These are a couple of photos of southern kingfish, Mentisursus americanus, and these fish reach sexual maturity at one year of age, so they are quite the early boomers. This bird is the ruddy turnstone, Arenaria interpress. You can tell by its bright orange feet and its kind of calico coloration on its back um, that that is its species identification. And these birds breed in the Arctic tundra and spend their migration seasons on both North American coasts. Next we have a Sanderling, Calidris alba. You'll see it is the white bird in the video. Black feet, black beak, uh, coloration on the back. These birds are obsessed with chasing waves. They're the little birds on the beach that you see that run super duper fast and their feet look like they're kind of going crazy. Um, and they also breed only on high Arctic tundra and then they migrate during the winter and live on most of the sandy beaches around the world. This is a video of two brown pelicans, Pelicanus occidentalis. These birds are highly social and they breed in colonies of up to several thousand pairs. This is the boat-tailed grackle, Quiscalus major. The first video is a little tough to see. Uh, he was really hiding in those bushes there. The second video is a clearer depiction. Um, I chose the boat-tailed grackle over the common grackle because while reading about the two species, uh, the boat-tailed grackle was said to be more aquatic and obviously this bird was found near an aquatic location um and these birds are known for entering heron colonies to feed on their unguarded eggs this is a video of an osprey kind of just coasting the air uh, we went to the beach on a very windy day, so I actually had a lot of videos of Osprey just kind of chilling in the air, probably scoping the place out, riding the waves, um, and these birds are honestly a lot bigger than I had thought that they were, um, and they're quite the flyers. They could log more than 160,000 migration miles during their 15 to 20 year lifetime. And they are great divers. 
And here is the literature and media cited. Thank you so much for watching not only this presentation, but all of the presentations throughout this semester. And good luck.